When you make steps in the spirit, it is automatic to make steps in the, in the physical. The moment you begin to take steps in the spirit, it is automatic that you will begin to manifest in the physical. In the physical. In the physical. That John, that John. That John verse 2, that John chapter 1 verse 2, that John has only one chapter. That John verse 2, that John verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou should, that thou mayest prosper, Nina Tamani. I wish so much that you, beloved, should prosper and be in health prosper and grow in health prosper and grow grow in health you need to prosper but also grow in health you need to prosper the kind of prosperity that will grow you spiritually the kind of prosperity that will not take you from the church you need to grow in a way that you will not come out of church. You need to have money, wealth that will not take you away from God, away from Jesus. So I wish that you become wealthy. I wish that you would drive a good car. But even as you drive a good car, I also want to see you growing spiritually. I want you to be in health. Don't prosper and then you are deteriorating spiritually. Don't prosper. Usikuwe na pesa lakini mambo ya kiroho unashuka. Usikuwe madeni umemaliza lakini sasa huku kwa kiroho sasa wewe ume ma, ma, ma pepo ya mekuja. Umemaliza mashimo ya dunia Umemaliza mashimo ya kimaisha Lakini sasa huku kwa kiroho umejama gaps Huku kwa kiroho ukona madeni Kule kwa mwili in the physical umemaliza madeni Lakini huku kwa kiroho unadaiwa Unadaiwa utakatifu Unadaiwa kuna vitu unadaiwa Mungu akikuangalia na kudai Mungu akikuangalia na sema dada ninajua uliokoka lakini hapa you stopped being the way you were before. You stopped being passionate about me. You stopped being zealous about the church. You stopped being, you know, the way you used to be before. You have money, yes. Mm. You have money, yes. But in this area, I have something against you. I pray that we will not get there. So he says, I wish that you prosper and be in health. And then he says, even as thy soul prospereth. So not just the prosperity in the physical, he also wants you to prosper inside. So the moment you begin to prosper inside, it is automatic to prosper on the outside. It is automatic. Because the things of this life are spiritual before they are physical. Life is spiritual before it is physical. So the transactions that happen in the physical must begin in the spiritual. The transactions that happen in the physical, the development that, be, that happens in the physical is activated in the spiritual. It is activated in the spiritual. It is activated in the spiritual. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. You cannot see God in the physical if you have not lived a life that will please God in the spiritual. Because we don't please God in the physical. We please God in the spiritual. So you make your ways good in the, in the spiritual. You make your ways in the spiritual and then in the physical you begin to see God. He says, 
follow peace with all men be holy and holiness yani follow peace and follow holiness two things those two things you must follow follow peace with men and then follow holiness follow peace with all men but also follow holiness there is to tell you that you don't want to be friends with pastor julius you don't want to be friends and make peace with pastor julius at the expense of offending god don't follow peace with pastor gospel and then in the process you make god angry in the process of following peace with the man you neglect the happiness and your relationship with god are you understanding that scripture so do what follow peace with all men and what else and holiness and holiness so many people do the first part and others do the second part but most people will do the first part because god is merciful men if we offend a man there will be repercussions but we don't know that the repercussions in the spirit you don't see them today but you will see them later in life that's the only difference you may not see the repercussions the spiritual repercussions today you will feel them later you will feel them later if you don't make peace with god making peace with men is useless because later later that peace will not be there hallelujah so before you see god in this life you need to go into the spiritual and make sure that things are okay in the spiritual life is spiritual before it is physical so he says you are clean now you are clean you are clean you are ready by the word of god you are clean by the word you are clean this word is a cleanser ephesians chapter 5 526 give us from verse 24 so that you understand the context therefore as the church is subject unto christ so let the wives be to their own husbands in every thing so mm -hmm. husbands love your wives even as christ also loved the church and gave himself for it love you are wife the way jesus christ loved the church and died for the church and what else happened what else happened that he might sanctify he died for the church so that he can do what sanctify and cleanse it with the washing water washing of water by the word what did he use what was the soap in that washing the words the word of god will cleanse you the word of god will prepare you for productivity the word of god will make you ready for fruitfulness praise the lord now we can go back to where we started that is john chapter 15 verse 4 so verse verse 3 is the one that we were talking about and explaining all this verse 3 says Go back to verse 3. Now you are clean by the word. Through the word which I have spoken unto you. Then he says, abide in me. Now that you are clean. Is it not ironical that many Christians come when they are dirty? Because when Jesus loved you and picked you out there, you are dirty. He brings you to church and cleanses you, cleans you up and then when you are clean many people that's when they go away when you are clean you run away somebody say i will stay say again i will remain abide in me the reason he says abide it's because you will have reasons 
not to abide. There will be reasons for you not to remain. There will be reasons for you to live. There will be so many reasons. Good reasons and bad reasons. Good reasons and bad reasons. But he says abide. Abide in me. Abide in me. And I in you. If you stay in me, I will stay in you. If you want to carry God, what must you do? You must abide in him. Because that is the only way that he will come to you and abide in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can you accept you abide, you abide in me. Praise God. Verse 5 says what? Verse 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So write this down. Why God wants us to live with him? Number one, when we live with God, we can live a comfortable life. Very simple things, very simple reasons. Living with God gives you a comfortable life. Living with God gives you a comfortable lives. John 14. John chapter 14. The reason why people are depressed is because they live outside God. They don't live with God. Depression is when you live outside the plan and the purpose of God. If you live within the plan and the purpose of God, you will never be depressed. You will never be depressed. If you live within within the parameters that God allows you, if you live within the range and the area that God has specul or uh, stipulated for you and has allowed you to, you will never, you will never be worried. You will never live in depression. So depression comes when we want things that God has not allowed us to have. When we want to things that are beyond our provision when you desire things that God is not ready to give you you will be depressed because we cannot twist the hand of God we cannot change the plan of God amen I am God who changes not I am God and I change not. God does not change because of your prayer. People struggle when they are trying to reach what God has not given them. Write that down. That's the reason for struggle. Look at this scripture. Malachi chapter 3 verse 16. Not 16. 3 6. Oh, when people try to reach what God has not given them. Oh my God. You will struggle. You will struggle. Why? Because you can never change God. You can never change God. You can never change God. God is not a reactor. God is a proactor. God is not a reactor. God is a proactor. Before we go to, uh, uh, before we look at that and expound that a little bit, this is what the Bible says: "For I am the Lord, and I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed." God does not change. Amen. God is not a reactor. God is a proactor. Jeremiah chapter one, verse five. Jeremiah chapter one, verse five. Look at that scripture. Jeremiah one, verse five. He says, "Before I." Thee before I created you, I had already stipulated your course and your, your race, your lane. Tayari nilikuwa ni metengeneza njia yako. Before you were formed, I knew 
I had made a blueprint for you. There was a blueprint for your life. So don't try to change me. Don't try to. Even if you cry, God does not react to tears. God does not react to tears. He reacts to his purpose, to his word, to his will. If you want to, uh, to draw the attention of God, tell God what he said about you. Remind God what he said about you. Amen. So don't try to begin with God for a new deal. There, there is never a new deal. He says, before I formed you, before, I, before you were born, there was already a purpose for you. You were supposed to be in Kamulu, whether you liked it or not. Whether you went to university or not. Whether you were born by a different uh, mother or... You, you were supposed to be in Kamulu at this particular time. Amen. And there is nothing you would have done to be where you are. There is nothing you would have done to be where it was meant to be this way. Lift up your hand and say thank you Jesus for your plan for my life. I will not complain. I will be okay. I will be satisfied with what I have. John 14, John 14 verse 1. He says this, that do not trouble yourself. Don't be under pressure. Somebody say I will not be under any pressure. Say I refuse to be under pressure. Let not your heart be troubled. You just believe in God. Do you believe God? Believe that where you are is where God has placed you. That is now believing. Where you are is where God has placed you. Accept that. If you accept that, you will live a comfortable life. The reason why people are depressed is because of trying to reach out to things God has not given them. Things that are not ordained for you. Uh, live with what God has given you. First, Corinthians, First Timothy 6.6 6. First Timothy 6.6 6. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Ah, Amen. First Peter five seven. First Peter five seven. First Peter five seven says what? First Peter five seven says. Let's read it together. Casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. Amen. Jwe kile mikono, useme baba na jua, una nijali. Sema tena santi mungu, kwa sababu na jua, una nijali. Give us from good news, GNT, good news translation. Good news translation. So living with God gives you a comfortable life. Let's read together. Leave all your worries with him. Muachie masumbuko yako yote. Because he does what? He cares for you. Mimi ukiniletea mashida zako. Hata ukiniletea kuota. Hata ukiniletea 5% sita yaweza. Lakini Yesu mpeleke 100%. Yesu ukifika kwa Yesu muachie 100% of your troubles. Mimi ukiniletea zako 2% zita nichokesha. Manake nikona zangu Zikona zangu 100%. Na nikona za wengine. Amen. So tafadhali. Pelekea Yesu zote. Pelekea Yesu zote. Amen. And you will live a very comfortable life. Glory to Jesus. Number two. When we live with God. We get increments. We get increments. Tunapataga increase. Living with God gives you. Increase gives you increase ina kupatiaga kuongezeka kuishi na Mungu inaletaga kuongezeka kuishi na Mungu inaletaga maongezeko increment is 51 verse 1 and 2 living with God brings an increment it brings 
an increment living with God. You cannot live with God and reduce. People reduce when they neglect God. People reduce when they stay outside the protection of God. When we stay outside, that's a very important point for you to, to get. When we stay outside the protection of God, give us Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 10. People reduce when they stay outside the protection of God because outside are thieves. Amen. Outside, you find thieves, the devil, the thief cometh. But to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So if you stay out there, you're going to meet with the thief who will come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So reduction comes when people stay outside the protection of God. I pray that you will stay under the protection of God. I say that your children will stay under the protection of God. Let's look at this before we talk about children. Let's read one to go. If you dig a pit, you fall in it. The reason why people fall, it's because they dug a pit. They dug a pit. Either for your enemies, either for your neighbors. But if you are falling, there is a pit you dug somewhere. I told you about repercussions in the spirit. You don't feel it today. You don't feel it today. You can't fall in a hole that you can see. You can't fall in a hole that you know you dug. If you know hapa kuna shimo nilichimba jana ya cho, labda ukwe wazimu kama utanguka. Mutu wanguka kwa shimo yenye ulisahau kuna kwaga na shimo. Ama shimo ambayo ulichimba kitambo alafu ikamelelea nyasi. So when you are walking and you forgot that you dug a hole, eh, you are just walking comfortably and as normal. And then you find yourself where? Inside the hole. Why? Because it was done long time ago. So there are holes that we are falling in today, but they were dug so many years ago. I pray in the name of Jesus that God will open your eyes. That your eyes will be able to see every pit ahead of you. Every pit ahead of you. May the Lord open your eyes for you to see every pit ahead of you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say, I refuse to fall. Say again, I refuse to fall. So stay with God. Stay with God stay with God because we, when you stay with God, God will open your eyes. God will guide you. God will guide you. A good man, God orders his step. God orders the steps of a good man. If you dig a pit, what will happen? You will fall in it. If you break through a wall, what will happen? A snake will bite you. A snake will bite you. So the reason why people are in pain, it is because there are walls they broke. There are walls that are broken in their lives. The walls of protection. The walls of spirituality. The walls of prayer. The walls of tithes. The walls of, you know, good works. The walls of helping people. They no longer help people. Kitambo. Kitambo, long time ago they used to help people. They used to carry other people's burdens. And if you water, he that watereth others shall himself be watered. If you are no longer watering other people, who will come to water you? And that is why there is a reduction in your life. That is why you are no longer progressing. That's why you are no longer advancing in life. Because you stopped doing good. You stopped doing good. The days you used to do good, good things used to happen in your life. May the Lord give you the grace to continue doing good. You know, the, the walls that were broken, may you begin to rebuild them. I say, may you begin to rebuild them. 
Some of you, you used to have walls of protection because of kingdom service. You used to come to church to serve God. Look at Exodus. Exodus 23 verse 25. Exodus 23 verse 25. Look at that. And this is for people who stopped serving God. There was a wall of protection around you because of serving God. But now it is no longer there because you are no longer serving. You are no longer, every disease that wants to attack people comes to you, comes to your children. That's why there is reduction in your life because of staying outside the protection and the, and the wall of God. Let's read it together. Give us from KJV. 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 One to go. Let's read. Let, read that again. And you shall serve the Lord your God. And what will happen? And he shall bless thy bread. And what? And thy water. Amen. And what will happen? And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. So today, when you drink water, your water produces minyon. Your water produces hookworms, uh, lukewarms. Uh, is there? <laughs> lukewarm is not a worm. <laughs> there is what else? There is cutworm, there is roundworm, there is what else worm. So many worms in your, in your stomach. Hallelujah. Until now you develop other issues. Amen. Amen. When you drink water now there is, it produces typhoid. And for your neighbors, your neighbors are okay. Your neighbors are playing and jumping. Their children are okay. They are in school. But your child they cannot go to school because of stomach. Because your water is no longer blessed. Your bread is no longer uh, blessed. Yeah, some people eat bread and they realize when they are already done eating. That is when they are realizing that it has developed even mold. It was bad. But they don't get sick. Amen. Why? Because their bread was blessed. Their water was blessed. May the Lord bless your bread and your water. I say may the Lord bless your bread and your water. You will not get sick. I say you will not get sick. In the name of Jesus. So he says, when you serve him, he will even take away what? Your sickness. He will take away sickness from you. So that is protection for people who serve God. Somebody say, I will say, I will serve God. Say again, I will serve God. All the days of my life. Yeah, look at another wall in, it, in uh, Isaiah 54 verse 17 as we close. Isaiah 54 verse, verse 17. This is very important. Increment. There is increment of protection. Increment. Increment. Yeah, the increase of protection, no reduction. Ah, somebody say from today, I pray that there will be no reduction in my life. Look at that scripture. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Who are these thee? Ninani how are I to thee? Please don't, don't, don't ever quote this scripture if you are not a servant of God. If you are not serving God. Let's continue so that you know it's for the servants of God. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Who is this person that is given that promise? Let's read it. This is the heritage of who? It's the heritage for the servant of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Lift up your hand and say from today. No reduction. In my life. I will increase. Like Abraham. So Isaiah 51. As we close. 51 verse 1 and 2. Very fast. Let's read this together. Want to go? Hearken to me. You that do what? Follow after righteousness are you a follower of righteousness you that do what seek the lord look unto the rock whence you are wound and to the hole of the pit where you were digged look 
unto Abraham your father and unto Sarah that bear you or give birth to you. Why? Because I called him alone. When I called him, he was alone. I called him alone. And what happened? I blessed him. And what happened after he got the blessing? And increased him. May the God of increment begin to bless you. And begin to increase you. As you continue to seek God. As you continue to follow God. As you continue to seek righteousness. May increase come your way. May increase follow you. All the days of your life.